Horse Racing Nation you to preview the Pacific Classic, the big one on the West Coast, at least as far as the older males and up and coming three year olds go, mile and a quarter on the main track at Del Mar and at Del Mar, not literally as we speak, but certainly been there enough this meeting is Mike Shuddy, impresario of the Super Screener. And Mike, I know you get geared up for almost every weekend, a lot of great previews, a lot of great analysis, but I'm sure as a denizen of Southern California, Pacific Classic weekend has to be one of your favorites. Yeah, it's kind of at the pinnacle here, right? Uh, what I love about it too is that horses have had a chance to run maybe those that are locally based, you know, maybe one time, some, you know, some two times, but uh, you got a little bit more of a, a play on the form. And then, of course, we're now we're starting, you know, many of these races can be considered, if you will, preps coming into the Breeders' Cup. So great time to be a horse racing fan. Great time to be at Del Mar. Yeah, no, no question about the prep aspect. And this race has moved around a little bit as of late over the last few years. Uh, they went with this place on the calendar last year and attracted a huge name in Flightline who used this as his prep for the Breeders' Cup Classic. And it just seems now with the way horsemen are taking time between grade one marquee races with their best animals, uh, that this will be the final prep. I, I would think for anyone who runs well with designs on the classic, this is probably it. I couldn't agree more. I think it has become no longer the penultimate, but the ultimate prep for sure. Yeah, it's sort of a, a Florida Derby vibe for the Breeders' Cup Classic, whereas that sort of once was the the big penultimate race before the wood or the bluegrass. Now is one of the final preps, as is the Pacific Classic. And I would also say a, a feather in the cap of, of Del Mar, uh, as great as the Jockey Club Gold Cup is, super prestigious, historical, one of the big names of the turf in my mind for older males, the Pacific Classic in recent years, uh, I would say, is right there with it, if not past it, in terms of some of the talent they've uh, attracted. Yeah, I mean, if you look historically and even look at uh, a lot of our super screener research for the Breeders' Cup, um, you know, for the Classic race, it used to be that the, the route was always through New York, right? <laughs> and uh, not so much anymore. I think the, uh, the tables have turned a little bit. Um, we'll see if that continues. But for right now... Even looking at it this year, it seems like, you know, Del Mar has the upper hand a bit, I'd say, going into the uh, Breeders' Cup. Yeah, and uh, of course, on the West Coast this year and next year, Santa Anita and Del Mar, respectively. And uh, we'll segue into this year's field uh, with one last historical piece of the Pacific Classic. And that is, it does seem to be uh, sort of the last bastion of these older races before the Breeders' Cup that still attracts three-year-olds. Uh, you know, the, the Travers has been a final prep now for a few horses to the Breeders' Cup. Others go the Pennsylvania Derby route, which is still for three-year-olds before the Classic. But out West, not a lot of three-year-old options once you get out of that Triple Crown season. And three-year-olds, including some of the biggest trainers of three-year-olds like Bob Baffert, are willing to use this race as a prep and face older early, such as the case this year. And it makes for a great field. Yeah, it sure does, because uh, you've got that other uh, handicapping factor, right, of uh, three-year-olds against uh, older for the first time. Um, you know, the handicap division, you know, probably not as uh, stellar as it has been in years past. So it's hard to uh, blame connections for, you know, taking a shot here with uh, very viable three-year-olds as we have, you know, exactly in place this year. And you look over this race, I think of the 30-plus years it's run, uh, there have been five, I think, three-year-old winners. I think the most recent, though, it's been a while. Shared belief, uh, perhaps, uh, was the last one that I can recall. Um, so they, they, you know, they can be effective here. And uh, yeah, there's no shyness about entering. And a couple names uh, out of the Haskell. So they went east to prep for this. Now they're back home, if you will. Uh, speaking of the winner of the Haskell, go Rocket Ride. And then uh, Arabian Knight, who is, uh, I believe, third uh, behind Mage uh, and sort of the sandwich position there. Uh, reasons to like both, I think, in this spot, even against older, including in the uncoupled stable mate defunded, a grade one winner in his own right. Uh, as you noted, lots, lots of angles here. Uh, for me, I did start with the three-year-olds in part because I think they're talented, but also with Go Rocket Ride, you have the pace presence. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I looked at this race um, historically and uh, what was the one interesting factor is the race is typically won 
uh, by the time the winner hits the one mile marker. Uh, it's very difficult to come from, let's say, even more than two lengths um, off the um, pace leader once they hit the one mile mark. Looking back at the last 10 years, for example, every horse that has won this race, with the exception of two, have done so uh, when they've taken the lead at the mile or just before the mile point. Uh, the exceptions were Shared Belief, who was about two lengths off the pace leader, and then Tripoli a couple of years ago, who did so one length off the pace leader. So sort of the starting point is if you, if you do like time form US um, and, and like we do in the super screener, if you plot out where these horses are gonna be at various stages in the race, one of the first looks I take are at, you know, who is gonna be, you know, within two lengths of the, uh, the lead once they get to about that mile spot. And in this race, you've got about four uh, or five that uh, really qualify for that. It's it so quite a few, uh, almost half the field here. Uh, Go Rocket Ride certainly would be one of them. Uh, Stiletto Boy, definitely um, mm. another. Uh, and then you've got uh, Slow Down Andy, who projects to be there as well. And then the two Baffert horses. So there's the five. And you know clearly we're looking at that. And as we go through the rest of the screening, uh, the top two horses come out of that those first five there. So um, it's a very useful tool because I know a lot, a lot of folks are going to like some of the deeper closers. Senor, Senor Buscador, the super screener top long shot pick last out in the San Diego handicap. Um, sure looks good on paper at a mile and a 16th, <laughs> but this is a whole different race and uh, definitely won't be within uh, two lengths of uh, You'll be the back at the mile spot. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the dynamics of the mile and a quarter and, you know, very uh, anecdotal, but, you know, certainly the, the weekend warrior types or those that don't dig into this stuff maybe as much as we do are, I think, prone to see the longer distances and assume that do that doesn't hamper closers. But just the more we look at these types of races and how they're run, uh, I always start on the front end, which is how I landed on and this is a brag, but that's how I landed on randomized two weeks ago in the Alabama. She just looked like she could be out there. And, you know, if you're not going to get the distance, you're not going to get it a lot harder trying to close into a mile and a quarter than you are on the front end. Uh, so that's always something I think about with distance and glad to hear you bring it up as well. And the other thing kind of zooming out just from the super screener approach, whether it's this race or any of the countless others you handicap throughout the year, but especially with the mile and a quarter, there's so few races day to day that you really can't even look at a track profile for a mile and a quarter. And when I went to my always database, I know uh, you also use uh, some BristNet data when screening races, all 15 of the mile and a quarter races that I had in there were for older males, either stakes or graded stakes. That's it. Uh, over you know several years, I don't think I go as far back as you do, but you know that just speaks to the importance of being able to look at this race specifically, which is what you did, and you know obviously being on the front end or, or near it, turning for home is huge. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, I think Richard's kid who won this two years in a row uh, <laughs> came back from a little bit further, so uh, so it can be done. But you have to have an incredibly insane pace setup, um, and while we'll we'll be brisk and um, contested, it's not suicidal uh, in terms of the way we're projecting it. So, I think that uh, creates a very fair playing field. Um, but then again, you got to play into the profile for this race, which is you just can't be too far back at that point in the race. No, I'll let you. I'll let you unveil your top pick. But I'm guessing you don't have it as a gate to wire threat, because to me, that's if the race is one gate to wire, I have to think it's going to be go rocket ride. So I'm interested to hear when you think your pick is actually going to take control of the race. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, it depends on who's battling out for what. And I believe that um, Arabian night will be the pace leader. Okay. Um, by that, I mean, you know, have a head or neck or half a length in front, um, but will be pressed, you know, in very close attendance, I think defunded will sit just a length behind um, and uh, and track that way, pressing through reasonable fractions, but fractions that horse can handle, who is also uh, you know has done some mile and a quarter work, but um, I think um, Arabian Night I, I'm just not a fan at this distance. Um, anything can happen, of course. You know, if there was a chance to back up the field, 
maybe, but I just don't see a randomized type uh, race here for this uh, particular horse. I wouldn't say this one's in it to uh, create rabbit and, and all of that. I think they're both legitimate uh, Baffert horses that deserve to be there. Um, but I think to fund it has the better chance if we were looking at just the Bafferts. Mm. Um, Stiletto Boy is interesting. I think uh, this horse seems to do better out there uh, somewhere winging it on the front end. I can't see this one further back than a length, length and a half either. So there, there was a presser kind of play there. Um, I think uh, Go Rocket Ride could be as much as two lengths off that pace, but certainly right there in the early going. And then um, so would be Slow Down Andy. So I think it really comes down to how much pressure will be put on uh, Arabian Night and how well intended is Defunded here. <laughs> and Defunded, uh, visually, I remember watching the race and being disappointed in his last. I mean, I am a Ragazin devotee, so that's sort of the other piece for me, along with, you know, the Brisnet stuff. And the number actually wasn't awful. Uh, so performance wise, it, you know, was, I guess, better than you looked, better than it looked, you would say. Uh, nevertheless, like visually, I'm just a, a little concerned about how short a price you want to take off of that. And, uh, you know, I, I actually, and I'll bring up my fair odds so you can see, uh, I actually think that Arabian Night, if you gun to my head, I would say is, the most likely winner at four to one. So he's the shortest price, but we're not going to get four to one. So, you know, even as I say, okay, yeah, he wins this race, I think more than any other horse in a vacuum from a price standpoint, I'm not going to get that. So I'm, I'm immediately thinking elsewhere. And I actually have not, or I have, I have seen the morning line, but I, I'm a little dubious in how this race is going to be bet. And I'm thinking maybe slow down Andy, if, you know, he gets ignored, could be a price. Senor Buscador, I might have to downgrade after our discussion because you're absolutely right. He's going to be too far out of it. Go Rocket Ride certainly is going to be bet. So, you know, for me, it's like, okay, where does the price end up? And uh, I think it's 7, 8, or, or 11. And we haven't even mentioned Skinner yet, who I was very right. on come derby time. Uh, you know, he, he has a look to him. If he gets ignored, I'd, I'd have to consider. But uh, this is a great betting race because I know Ara I go into this knowing Arabian Night is going to be an underlay. Right. No, I, no, no question about it. Um, and that's my concern from a wagering perspective. Look, if either one of Baffert's horse won this race, there'd be there'd be no shock no. Uh, <laughs> factor there whatsoever. Um, but I think they're beatable, uh, particularly under these conditions and with this field that has been gathered and with the way this pace is setting up. So it will not be easy on the front end. There's th that, that we are clear on. Um, and so I, I mean, the big reveal <laughs> for me is uh, Go Rocket Ride is a special horse. We, we, prior to the Haskell, we had literally, literally had written saying, do not ignore this horse especially if it goes off at more than five to one at any price use under in your tickets but over five to one all of a sudden that horse now becomes a win contender and the reason for that is we said hey look the horse had to go on the shelf unfortunately um right before the santa anita derby so really taken off the trail there was always a lot there was already a lot of buzz about that horse at that time um and then came back and in the affirmed stakes after a very, very long layoff, um, really ran a sharp, sharp effort against just four others, uh, pretty nondescript. But it was that kind of race you want to see a horse who has quality uh, was making coming back off of a layoff. And so going through form cycle analysis, we said, OK, the San Felipe was a really good race for Go Rocket Ride. Uh, it earned a brisk, net, a brisk figure of 99. And so uh, he got a 92 in the in the affirmed. So when we do our analysis. Um, someday we'll explain all that. But the um, the projection was for a 99 or for a 99 again to meet the top uh, that was established in the San Felipe off that sort of comeback race uh, after being away for quite a while. Um, the horse has incredible balance, um, has a big heart. You can tell runs with determination, does not quit. And um, and really felt that, but from the way this horse was working out too, long and strong, that uh, that opportunity to ascend uh, in the form cycle uh, seemed pretty darn clear. So 
lo and behold, he goes off at 12 to one and <laughs> he, he pops a hundred. We were off by a point, uh, forgive me. But uh, so, uh, so he not only met his um, prior top, but he eclipsed it by a point. Um, and so it's hard for me to uh, have anything um, but positive things to say about this horse. Cause I think it's really a special three-year-old. And I really wish this horse would have gone to the Travers to see what we have there um, uh, against his, um, his other uh, uh, sophomores. But um, I just, I, I'm just, um, I'm just really am amazed with this horse. However, <laughs> that was a big race. And, All that's and they're, they're heading to the classic. There's no question about it. That's, that's, that's the uh, target now. And so the horse doesn't have to, why, why try to go too, deep down on this horse in this race. I think that, that we're looking for is a solid effort, maybe a nudge forward, you know, a 102 or something in the end, um, which to me is, it, it, he's a perfect second place horse. He'll be very reliable. If I had to pick a horse that's most likely to finish in the trifecta, it's this horse. Um, Skinner we'll talk about as well, but I, um, but you know, he's five to two and there's still some risk here. First, first time against older, first time mile and a quarter. I think the distance is not a problem. Uh, he's not up against crazy good um, uh, older horses either. But there is one horse <laughs> that I think will deny him the win. Uh, and he's coming into this race the right way for the Pacific Classic. And he's probably just a nudge better uh, than Go Rocket Go is as a three-year-old. Now, if, if Go Rocket Row was in his next season here. He's a four-year-old. I'd, I'd say that the tables would turn. But right, right now, um, and you mentioned this horse already, great value prop here is Slow Down Andy. Um, this is the coming out party, we believe. <laughs> We've been on Slow Down Andy before. Um, he was our top long shot pick in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. And that was a really good race. You know, this, this horse keeps running against, you know, White Barrio, Zandon, uh, Cody's Wish. Yeah, uh, you know, some really, really top talent, uh, you know, has left California to go compete. And I thought that Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile was particularly stellar, uh, chasing a really fast pace and then, um, you know, holding on well enough for third to just finish a, a length and three quarters back uh, behind Cody. So um, and then that was a great way to finish up the season. If you note for anybody who you know follows form patterns and, and figures and sheets, et cetera. He moved forward nicely, incrementally, all year long, culminating into that dirt uh, race. Came back in the Met Mile. That was after, what, six months off, needed it. He's kind of misbehaving that day as well, so we got to watch out for that. Um, but in that San Diego handicap where um, it's traditionally a prep for this race locally, um, he ran really well, super balanced. He moved forward, uh, and he's been working up a storm coming mm. into this race after that. Uh, and no question about his ability to get a mile and a quarter. Um, sits a great trip, like we mentioned earlier. He'll be right at that position you want to be in, either on the lead or just off it as they hit the mile point. So um, I, I just, in terms of value, for those the horses that will be right there and at that mile point, this is the horse with the best shot to win it. I like what you said about uh, sort of go rocket ride, uh, you know, obviously the Breeders' Cup Classic's the goal. And looking at this race versus what actually might show up in the Classic in, what is that, nine weeks away, there might be more pace in the Pacific Classic than he'll see in the Breeders' Cup Classic. So from a, hey, run your race, but don't empty the tank chasing Arabian night uh, makes a lot of sense to me and, you know, could see where they'd be thinking, hey, let's get a good one here. And then yeah. Classic Day we can, you know, go for it on the front end and see what we got. And uh, I agree, it seems, uh, you know, slow down Andy to me, not among the most likely winners, if I were to rank them percentage wise, which I did with fair odds, but I think there's definitely potential for value there because he's going to run his race. And you said we'd get to Skinner. And I also know we need to circle back to a, a previous winner of the, the race in Tripoli. Uh, and then I would say any of the other ones we haven't mentioned, uh, just maybe overmatched against this group. Sure. Yep. I would agree. Yeah. Skinner, um, sort of gets disqualified for the win spot, if you will, <laughs> uh, based again, if this isn't, you know, the, the Derby trail where we're running, you know, mile 16th or, or a mile and eighth mile and a quarter again. 
And it was the Kentucky Derby with a hot pace. Inner looks pretty darn good. Um, but here we are again. Um, you know, how does he fit? Where will he sit once we uh, kind of get to that mile point? And our projections are about four lengths uh, back still off the pace leader at that point. Coming, um, but definitely, um, you know, far back. And when you have the others who aren't going to really, you know, get uh, too um, depleted energy-wise from this pace, they're still going to have enough um, for that final quarter mile that it's not as if, you know, the race is collapsing on the front end here. So, which I think Skinner would need in order to win this race. However, um, boy, he sure tracks and projects well for a spot in your um, trifecta wager, certainly your superfecta. And if I had, again, uh, the kind of the way I'm going to play this race wagering wise is, you know, really locking slow down Andy in first and using go rocket ride and Skinner as sort of my, my key vertical uh, coupling, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. to kind of keep the wagers narrow, you know, not necessarily hitting the all button in the other slots, but uh, you know, being more generous and then, uh, and then maybe cover slow Andy in second, you know, with, with some backups, but um that's because because I really do see there's still question marks about slow down Andy in my mind, um, but I do love the way he's coming into this race and I, he's in this to win it now. I don't think there's designs on the classic unless he performs extremely well here and just earns his way in. Right. Um, so he, he's in this to win it now. There's no like, well, let's not tap down. He's <laughs> this is the go for it race for him. Yeah, a million bucks. So uh, yeah. reason enough there as well. And uh, Triple E, you had, you had made a note to uh, circle back on him. Is, is he a yeah. long shot look as well? Or? Yeah, he won a couple of uh, years ago, as you know, and uh, won this race a couple of years ago. And in that, in, at that point, I don't know if that was 2021 or 2020, 20, somewhere in there, but he, um, he was a monster coming into that race. He was popping some really big triple digit uh, brisk uh, speed rating figures. Uh, I think he submitted a 108 in um, the uh, Pacific Classic back a couple of years ago. However, after that race, he never came close to that, never came close to a triple digit figure. Um, and if you look over his last 10 races, he finally, there's kind of a resurgence here. And he does love Del Mar. I think that we have to take into consideration. But he's finally climbing sort of the form progression ladder again and he finished his last race it was a fifth place finish so he's you know he's his form's darkened a little bit from that regard which helps the odds here um but it was a 98 and he's moved forward over his last two starts um so i don't see a win here for this horse but it, now at 20 to 1 versus i think he was 7 to 1 when he won right. this race um you know if he continues that ascent we know he gets a mile and a quarter we know he likes the surface uh, I think that's another one where, especially if you're a super effective player, uh, he has that look of that fourth place finisher at big odds. Um, and I would definitely not eliminate him from the under portions of some of your exotic tickets. All right. And uh, along with uh, analysis like this, uh, that's in super screener, not only for the Pacific Classic, but plenty of other races this and every weekend, there is wagering strategy as well. So uh, for those who uh, didn't catch all that or are curious how uh, Mike applies uh, this type of analysis to all stakes races and even a maiden occasionally, you've snuck right. in there to, to some scores uh, already this summer. Uh, okay. The wagering strategy is great too. And uh, there's usually a, a multi-race uh, play uh, in the mix, pick four, pick three, uh, that's gridded up for you. So uh, a lot of different ways to apply the knowledge and uh, with Super Screener, it's every weekend, and we have a special going now through Breeders' Cup. So I'll put a link to that in the comments. Uh, but uh, I'm guessing you'll be there Saturday, Mike? Yes, I am. I'll, I'll be there, and I'm playing in their um, uh, contest. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, going that day. So I hope to see, uh, us, as I often do, our some of our subscribers out there. And uh, hopefully we will use the, uh, the Super Screener to... Uh, Move us up the ladder here. In this yes, tournament. would love to hear that you want a seat to the BCBC or NHC. Oh, I would too. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've been uh, there twice before. Where you know, getting getting uh, you know, kind of lucky enough, I call it to uh, to get into the top ten. So um, looking to uh, hopefully do better this year. 
All right. Well, best of luck to you and, of course, uh, all our subscribers. Pacific Classic, just one of many races covered in this week's screener. And then you'll want to be with us all the way through Breeders' Cup and beyond for uh, the great preps and great races coming up. Mike, thanks a lot. All right. Well, if you got any more randomizers or randomizing, et cetera, <laughs> picks, just uh, go ahead and send them over to me in a, in a, in a text message. Sounds good. Is uh, the contest Del Mar only? Uh, it is Del Mar only. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that to you, but uh, down the road, when another one comes up, I'll make sure to, to keep you apprised. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. This great Very to uh, connect today and, uh, uh, all our best to, and thank you to all our subscribers for all the loyalty and, um, you know, hopefully we're continue to reward you uh, each and every week. And let's do it again this week. Sounds good. He's Mike. I'm Ed. Sports Racing Nation. Good luck, everybody.